I think when you're playing, you get so caught up in performing and trying to be the best athlete that you neglect your happiness and your mental health. And I think a lot of athletes struggle with that. It's important to share your stories because I know for a fact that I'm not alone and I know people have gone through the same thing that I have. I'm Erica Timrak and I'm a game changer. I kind of always just had like a gift with the ball at my feet. When I played in college at the University of Florida, won a couple SEC championships, All-American, SEC Player of the Year. But I think my time in college was special because it's when I really realized that I wanted to keep playing afterwards. I played for FC Kansas City and we had a really good team. I got Rookie of the Year and then the next two years we won back-to-back -back national championships but there's a lot of pressure being a professional athlete. I remember having these terrible feelings of anxiety and stress and just feeling like they were never gonna end. And then my last two years playing, it just got really bad to where I felt pretty out of control. I hit a pretty dark place. As an athlete, you feel that anxiety, stress, depression is kind of seen as a weakness, so I didn't really vocalize it to my teammates, I didn't tell my coaches. I made the decision to retire, but to be honest, at that point, it didn't really feel like a choice. It felt like the only thing I could do to try and get better. I actually moved out to Los Angeles, Venice Beach. I surfed pretty much every morning. I did yoga, I meditated, and put my mental health and my happiness as my number one priority, and then I started, you know, gradually climbing out of the dark place I was in. I knew deep down that I still wanted to play, but I think the biggest fear I had was that my mental health would decline again, that I wouldn't be able to handle the pressure again. Sydney LaRue had called me just randomly. Um, we've been friends forever, and I told her everything, and she said to me, E, why don't you play again? You still love playing, so like, why don't you just try? After I got off the phone, I thought about it. I put everything towards making this thought like a reality again. I knew it was gonna to be tough taking a year off and then jumping back into probably the most competitive, fastest, strongest league in the world, but I was like, I know I can do this. I wanted to be close to home because I was going through a difficult time. And so I told myself, if this works out and I can, you know, get to Orlando, then I'm gonna go for it. The trade went through and then before I knew it, I was back from retirement. Tim Rack tries to again, trying to apply the pressure and it's gone in. And you can only say that she meant that given the lack of options and that is an extraordinary goal. This team kind of became my family this year and being so excited to go to practice every day and I hadn't felt that in years. I kept my routines. I do yoga and I meditate. I see a sports psychologist and I'm able to manage stress and anxiety as it comes. I feel like it was kind of the step I needed to evolve as a player. And I think that it's helped me so much, especially this year coming back. I think the biggest thing that I learned is that I'm a lot stronger than I thought. And I got through that really dark time in my life. And hopefully me talking about it allows other people to see that like you aren't alone. I was able to donate to one of my favorite charities to write love on her arms and they give hope and help people struggling with depression, anxiety, suicidal thoughts. I step on the pitch every day and I'm so excited to play. I can honestly say that I love soccer again.